Hey, welcome to the video guys. I'm back in Cebu City, my home from Necros trip for the past 10 days or so. This video is gonna be a little bit different. It's in between yesterday. I arrived, met up with Sherilyn, got some news about her mom and we talked about our future uh, travel plans and what's going on. And we also had a small uh, prank in between. <laughs> oh my God. So that's gonna be released tomorrow, but if you're new here to the channel, my name is Finn Snow, I'm an adventure seeker, travel blogger, whatever you guys wanna call us. I don't really know the names these days, they're always a new one, influencers, that's a word I hate by the way. But anyways, uh, this video is gonna be a really fun one, I'm gonna reveal my top 5 non-touristy islands of the Philippines. Now I get this question all the time, what is your favorite island, what's the best place to go? So I've already done the top 10 places in the Philippines for 2019. No, it was 18 maybe, I don't know. Anyways, but I'm gonna link that video up here if you wanna see that. And this one is gonna be about the islands. The non-touristy one. And those islands are really uh, close to me. They're, uh, they're places that have changed me. Some of them are a place that I feel really proud of exploring. I learned a lot from them. You experience the culture, you immerse yourself with the people. Those are a bit special compared to the uh, touristic spots. And even some of these islands deserve a little bit more recognition than they uh, have right now. So uh, it's gonna be an interesting list for you guys to see. Now, Philippines is made up of 7,641 islands. And currently at my rate, which is about 70, 75 explored per year, that would take me 102 years to complete them all. And with that, I've explored up to uh, 50 provinces and somewhere between 100 and 150 islands. Yeah, and I also don't know how they count the islands. What if there's a big rock? Do they count that as island? Do they count it when it's low tide, high tide? Do they count the sandbar as island? So I don't know the real count. Now I've been looking for that answer for quite some time and I still don't know, but uh, we'll, see. we'll see. Anyways, just before we start the top five non-touristy, this video is sponsored by my friends in Epidemic Sounds and they've actually created a playlist on their website dedicated to my mood, my feelings, my type of songs that I've been using, some of the iconic ones you might have heard before. There's a whole list, I'll link down below where you're gonna go and check it out. And Epidemic Sound is a platform that I've been using for the past two years on all of my videos, all the songs, the, the right mood, the right tempo, the right feeling, all of these things you can search on the website just by a couple of clicks and download, plug it into your video and render it out. Done deal. So if you're new to the YouTube scene or making travel videos, this is a great platform. And I can't emphasize enough how music is important to videos, especially if you're trying to get the right mood, the right feeling. For example, if you have a kind of emotional scene, you can have emotional music to it. There has to be a way of expressing the right emotions, the feelings that you're having in the video to the audience. So that's where the music comes in and Epidemic Sound has been a great partner for me in that. So click the link in the description if that's something for you. So once again, thank you so much Epidemic Sound for sponsoring this video. And without further ado, let's get into the top five non-touristy islands of the Philippines. Number five, Lima Salvan, a historical island of the Philippines. It's believed that it was the first island that Mangella brought his cross to hold the very first mass of the country in the year of 1521, which started the Christianity in the country. I never planned to go to this island, but when I navigated through Google Maps, like a modern day sailor, I saw the island was close route from the southern Leyte to Surigo city. And for that reason, I decided to stop on the island. Sailing around the islands to the docks, you could already tell it was a beautiful one. Covered in green scenery of jungle and coconut trees. And a nice area for cliff jumping and relaxing. At number four, the island goes to Debangan in northern Palawan, near Tai Tai. I call this island the Bora Bora of the Philippines because the white powder sand and the beautiful colors of the ocean with the volcanoes in the background of the palm trees. This one is quite far from any civilization as well. You find powdery white sand stretching far into the ocean and not too deep, shallow enough for anyone to free dive and see countless of turtles feeding on the sea grass. The local life here is beautiful to see and the nature is worthy of any postcard from the Philippines. And if you're lucky, you can spot whale sharks and white endangered sea cows feeding or passing by. This kid here in the blue, he's actually deaf. He can't hear anything. Okay. At 
At number 3 we got all the way up to the north of Luzon to the island of Palaui. Better known as the famous TV show Survivor Island. Two seasons of the American version were filmed here. There are numerous spots on the island to visit and our favorite was the Survivor Beach which led up to a hill to a beautiful Spanish lighthouse looking over the Pacific. From the lighthouse is one of my favorite viewpoints of the whole country looking towards the nearby cliff island with stunning views. The grass and vegetation also gave you a special feeling exploring apart from the rest of the country. Palau Island is one of the best. And for the second spot, it goes to the island of Onok, Balabak, Palawan. I mentioned it before, it's one of the most difficult islands to get to. Minimum two days to get there from any part outside of Palawan. Arriving there, your feet will sink into the softest, white powdery sand of the country. Surrounded by a mighty reef, protecting the shallow ground from crashing waves, creating a perfect feeding ground for the turtles and the creation of the softest sand. It's also here where you find the most aqua, aqua, milky, blue ocean colors of the Philippines. And for the number one spot, it goes to the island of Ipayat of Batanes. Welcome to the last frontier of the northern Philippines. This is as far as you can go north, except one more island and you need to be escorted by the army. And it costs a lot. It's probably the most extreme island in the whole country to travel to. Because there's no harbor or proper docks for your boat to arrive. It's the largest complete coral island pushed up from the sea with a complete towering cliff surrounding it. And not a single beach, just cliffs 100% around it. It's also known as the most dangerous docking port in the country. And some say even the world with the mighty Pacific Ocean waves crushing into it. This is an island not for the faint-hearted or seasick. The island landscape is one of a kind in the Philippines, with so many interesting species and trees and plants. Nothing grows tall here. Every tree is tiny due to the location of the island, where typhoons pass by every year. The most amazing thing we explored on the island was the mighty Torongan Cave. It had the biggest cave opening I've ever seen in my life. And it's believed that the first Austronesians came through this cave 4,000 years ago, the first settlers. Getting into the island is risky and you might be stuck there for weeks due to bad weather. But the journey is worth it for this stunning island. And if you come here, you have to get a guide because it's a holy one. And right behind us, this is actually a grave. There used to be, there is a body there in bones and it's facing the ocean. And they believe if they face the ocean, their body is gonna rest there, giving them eternal life. And if you come here, you gotta visit this spot. There were no reasons why yes, beauty must So there you have it, my top 5 non-tourist islands of the Philippines and I'll be continuing exploring as much as I can around the country and with your help I've been able to discover some of these islands so if you don't mind, leave a comment below if you know any other locations you want me to go and explore even if it takes one or two or three days to reach it i'll make sure i'll be able to reach the destination it will mean the world to me if you hit the subscribe button and leave it a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and i'll be continuing exploring the rest of the country in the coming years or so thank you guys for watching and until next time peace out i don't know if you can see it on the video how big it is and how far down it is